This presentation has been prepared as part of a series of films devoted to hospital procedures. In any discussion of local anesthetic agents, it should be appreciated that this drug classification represents the most frequently parentally administered drug in dental practice. Due to such frequency of administration, it should be further appreciated that local anesthetic agents can produce untoward events which may result in serious morbidity or even mortality. It is the professional as well as legal responsibility of every dentist to be able to recognize and treat any serious untoward event associated with the administration of local anesthetic agents. Local anesthetic reactions may be classified into those of toxic overdose of local anesthetic agents, idiosyncrasy to local anesthetic agents, allergy to local anesthetic agents, and vasoconstrictor effect. Rather specific physiologic decompensation occurs with each of these events, and their early recognition is mandatory. For toxic overdose of local anesthetic agents to occur, it is usually considered that excess volume of anesthetic solution was administered over a relatively short period of time, or inadvertent intravascular injection of the agent occurred. Excluding idiosyncratic reactions, once a sufficient plasma level of the local anesthetic agent is attained, signs of either central nervous system stimulation or depression may be observed. This toxic event may be heralded by the patient becoming talkative, apprehensive, and excited. The pulse rate and blood pressure may be elevated. This form of central nervous system stimulation may then progress to convulsive seizures. The majority of local anesthetic toxic events will probably follow this pattern of events. It should be understood, however, that some local anesthetic toxic reactions are manifest by the patient suddenly becoming lethargic, drowsy, and even falling to sleep. These events may lead to the rapid development of respiratory and cardiac failure. In reaction to a local anesthetic agent that does not fit the true requirements for a toxic or allergic reaction may be labeled idiosyncratic. It is also an opinion by many that the idiosyncratic type of reaction can occur as the result of emotional interplay, thus causing an array of unusual symptoms. A local anesthetic reaction in the apprehensive dental patient that resembles a toxic overdose reaction, but is associated with only one or two carpules of local anesthetic solution, may be termed idiosyncratic. Allergic manifestations may vary from mild dermal rash to anaphylactic shock with cardiopulmonary failure. An important consideration in allergic reaction is the liberation of histamine in the body and its effect on the smooth muscle fibers of the bronchi and blood vessels, and also its effect on capillary permeability. Minor allergic events may be characterized by dermal rash, by pruritus, by rhinorrhea, and localized angioneurotic edema. More extensive involvement will produce massive urticaria, vasomotor collapse with hypotension, and marked respiratory distress from acute bronchial constriction. The rapidly, the rapidity with which symptoms develop together with the degree of embarrassment of the cardiovascular system and respiratory system determines how vigorously treatment should be performed and which drugs should be employed first. 
Many reactions attributed to local anesthetic agents are probably related to vasoconstrictor effect. Vasoconstrictor agents are placed in certain anesthetic solutions to delay uptake of the local anesthetic agent from the injection site and thus prolong the duration of regional analgesia. When local anesthetic solutions are injected into highly vascular tissues, there can at times be a rapid uptake of the vasoconstrictor component, which will produce rapidly signs and symptoms of adrenergic stimulation. The patient usually becomes nervous and jittery. A skin pallor will develop and the patient will be aware of a rapidly and strongly beating heart. The blood pressure is elevated and the patient will complain of weakness. Although the patient may become anxious over the symptoms, the patient usually remains relatively stable and merely requires close monitoring until the event has passed. Treatment of local anesthetic reactions will require recognition of the four basic physiological dearrangements. These dearrangements are, one, the physiologically compromised patient who is conscious, breathing, and has palpable pulse, therefore a state of pre-syncope. Two, the physiologically compromised patient who is unconscious, breathing, and has palpable pulse. Therefore, the state of syncope. The physiologically compromised patient who is unconscious, not breathing, and has palpable pulse. Therefore, respiratory arrest. And number four, the physiologically compromised patient who is unconscious, not breathing, and has no palpable pulse. Therefore, a state of cardiopulmonary arrest. The ability to recognize the state of consciousness or unconsciousness, insufficient circulation and contractility of the heart, inadequate airway and inadequate ventilatory exchange allows the dentist to provide immediate resuscitation efforts. As of October the 1st, 1975, it is now required by the Texas Dental Practice Act that all dentists be knowledgeable in the use of emergency drugs and equipment and provide training to their office personnel. Suggested dental office emergency equipment is as follows. One, blood pressure cuff. Two, a stethoscope. Three, the aneroid or mercury type manometer. Four, an intravenous infusion fluid, 500 cc's, preferably 5% dextrose and lactated ringers. Five, an intravenous infusion line. Six, a number 19 or a number 21 gauge butterfly needle. Seven, selected sterile syringes, three, five, 10 cc size. Eight, selected sterile needles, 21, 25 gauge, preferably an inch in length. Nine, a rubber tourniquet. 10, padded tongue blades. 11, nasal and oral pharyngeal airways, and 12, a positive pressure breathing device. The seven essential drugs for cardiopulmonary resuscitation are, one, oxygen. This is to meet the basal metabolic oxygen requirements of the patient. Two, sodium bicarbonate to reverse states of respiratory and metabolic acidosis, usually metabolic acidosis. Three, epinephrine, which is a vasopressor, a 
bronchial dilator, and a potent antihistaminic agent. Four, atropine to correct states of bradycardia. Five, lidocaine for ventricular type arrhythmias. Six, calcium chloride to increase the strength of myocardial contraction. And seven, my, uh, morphine sulfate to produce analgesic and euphoric states in the patient. Suggested dental office emergency drugs in addition to the seven essential drugs for cardiopulmonary resuscitation are diazepam and pentobarbital for their sedative and anticonvulsant effects, promethazine for its sedative anti-nauseant effect, aromatic spirits of ammonia for the reflex stimulation of respiration, the isoprel mistometer for the production of bronchial dilatation. Six, diazoxide, which is an anti-hypertensive agent. Seven, nitroglycerin sublingual tablets to act as coronary dilators. Eight, vesoxyl, and nine, ephedrine, which are vasopressor agents for states of hypertension. 10, Salucartef, and 11, Decadron, which are members of the steroid type of drugs. For treatment of toxic overdose of local anesthetic agents, a rapid clinical diagnosis must be made between persisting signs of central nervous system stimulation where convulsive seizures is a distinct possibility, and those fleeting signs of central nervous system stimulation that quickly change to prominent signs of central nervous system depression. Where central nervous system stimulation is paramount, and prior to the development of convulsive seizures, a intravenous lifeline should be placed and either diazepam, 10 to 15 milligrams, our pentobarbital, 50 milligrams, should be administered to combat the central nervous system stimulation. Do not administer excessive amounts of these sedative anticonvulsive agents for pharmacologic depression of the central nervous system as physiologic depression of the central nervous system will follow the period of increased central nervous system stimulation. Monitor the patient closely for consciousness, blood pressure, pulse rate and rhythm, respiratory rate and volume, and color of the patient. This will probably be all the treatment required for the toxic overdose. If central nervous system depression is the primary principal feature of the toxic overdose reaction, be prepared to support respiration and circulation. Oxygen combined with a positive pressure breathing device and the use of vasopressor agents may be needed to achieve this goal. Monitor the patient as described under central nervous system stimulation reaction. Idiosyncratic reactions to local anesthetic agents may simulate toxic overdose reactions, allergic reactions, are emotional reactions. Reaction to local anesthetic agents that do not fit the normal requirements to precipitate toxic overdose or allergic reactions should be treated symptomatically. Monitor the patient for consciousness, blood pressure, pulse rate and rhythm, respiratory rate and volume, and the patient's color. Administer oxygen with or without positive pressure. Use vasopressors to support the circulation. Antihistamines to combat minor allergic events. And maintain an adequate airway. The acute, rapidly developing allergic reaction 
associated with the administration of local anesthetic agents will require vigorous treatment. The primary drug of choice in this event is epinephrine, 1 to 1,000, given subcutaneous, intramuscular, or intravenous, usually in a dose of 5 tenths of a milligram. It may be necessary to repeat this dose in 10 to 15 minutes. Mechanical measures of oxygen with positive pressure ventilation should be started and conventional monitoring parameters also started. If stabilization of the cardiovascular and respiratory systems occurs following these measures, a intravenous lifeline should be started and diphenhydramine 50 milligrams followed by salukartef 100 milligrams should be given. Transportation to the nearest hospital emergency room should be done when the patient has stabilized sufficiently. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation consisting of positive pressure ventilation combined with external cardiac compression may have to be performed for this reaction. If the event following the administration of a local anesthetic agent is primarily related to adrenergic stimulation, especially a rapid pounding heartbeat and elevated blood pressure, and the vital signs remain basically stable, monitor the patient carefully for a vasopressor reaction. No treatment is usually indicated for this event other than gentle assurance that all is well. If the patient's anxiety becomes marked and emotional factors may complicate this reaction, then diazepam, 10 milligrams by intravenous puncture, may be administered. Due to the frequency of usage of dental patients, own dental patients, and the necessity at times to give several local anesthetic carpules for a given dental procedure, Every dentist should be familiar with reactions that may occur following local anesthetic administration. He should know how to recognize the various reactions and finally, how to best treat the reaction precipitated. 